Welcome guys, it's Danny Glover from Fight Fan TV Live. And today we're joined by the problem, Mikey McKinson. How are you doing today, sir? I'm good. Uh, this gets me excited. It's been a very slow year with nothing and all of a sudden I've got a real big important fight and coming to the getting invited to the presser and stuff. Just makes it exciting. We've got five weeks left and yeah, I can't wait. So how much notice did you have you got for this fight? Because it was quite um, announced quite s sudden. Did you have enough no like a good notice for it? Me and my opponent have known since the beginning of the summer that there's going to be a fight. So we've both been preparing and my opponent's been preparing. Um, it was just a case of date. There's been a few dates moved back and, and things like that. But we're here now. So I've had a long time to prepare. My summer was cancelled. All summer long I've been preparing. I'm in great shape. And obviously now it's confirmed and we've got five weeks left. So, so yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, uh, I can't pronounce his surname, but Donani is his first name. Uh, bit of a puncher. Um, only lost to Sebastian Formella and also uh, Sissoko, uh, the Frenchman. So, um, have you watched those fights and have you taken anything from it where you thought, yeah, you can exploit as well the same the same way or similarly? Do you know what the, the Formella fight was years ago now? Uh, because Talani and Benge had the IBO title before, so this is him trying to regain it for the second time, fighting me. Um, he lost to Formella in Germany on point, so I don't, I, I don't know how that kind of went, but you kind of can guess. Um, but when he lost to Sissoko, Solomon Sissoko is the WBC number one, uh, the Frenchman, and he lost on a split decision over 12 rounds in Paris to the Frenchman. He definitely won that fight in Benge, so you can argue his two losses he could have won, you know, so... A very dangerous world-class puncher, rangy, tall, um, going to bring all sorts of problems for the problem. But uh, I'm a very experienced, um, I think that he wouldn't have probably been in the ring with a fighter with my style uh, of, and my IQ and things like that. So I'll bring all the problems to him. Um, it's not so much what he can do, who he, like, who he is, it's what I can do. and. As long as I'm well prepared, which I feel well prepared already, um, the best version of me will win on the night 100%. Yeah, I love to hear that. So we haven't seen you for a while. What 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 has been up? Or what's, what you've been doing? What's been happening in the world of the problem? So I boxed here on a boxer card last December. I won the WBC International uh, against an undefeated Ghanaian. Um, won that. Came into the new year flying, fit, uh, expecting a fight in March, didn't happen. Been in the gym all year round, nothing happened. And then obviously this come around, it's been like a slow drag throughout the summer to get this over the line. Um, but you know, I can sit and mope and, uh, and like be frustrated with the opportunities. And I've got the opportunity now, it's here. Uh, full steam ahead, there's fighters like my brother. For, ex for instance, who's in the welterweight um, division, won the IB IBF European last time out. He beat Casey Benjamin, and now he's his opportunity. Any welterweights in the top ten out there want to fight Lucas Ballingall? He's ready to go. Well, um, it's welterweight, yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he started as a featherweight. Come in, Luke. Come in. Look, he looks bigger than me. He used he, st he started his he started his pro career at featherweight at 18. Now he's come through the weights and now he's met me at welterweight so he, I was saying to him before he's, he's called out on one of his interviews earlier called out anyone in the UK top 10 welterweight except me but if he don't get anything from them he's going to have to start calling me out <laughs> so, so how many bouts you had sorry about 20, 20. So are you thinking about maybe going for uh, doing the same opponent as Michael McKinson, um, Chris Congo? He just had a career best win against um, following Mar Florian Marku. To be honest, I thought I was fighting Congo in December last year, to be honest. So offered, offered to fight, I accepted it. I thought it was happening and it, it didn't materialise. So of course, that would be a lovely fight for me and I, I'm confident I'd beat him. So a fight like that is what I'm looking for next. I'll, I'll, I'll make it a little bit juicy if he does watch this. I've seen them two sparring each other and uh, my first couple of rounds were close but then Congo was in all sorts of trouble so like listen Lucas would love that fight um, he needs an opportunity like that but it also any any of them top 10 like there's loads of good names on like in, in the top 10 uh, at, on the weight division and 
he would fight any of them. And if he don't get any of them, he said he'd fight me. <laughs> well, I'm sure Chris Congo will be seeing this interview, so I hope that you do get a response. Uh, are you are you signed with anyone at the moment? No, I'm not. I'm not signed with anyone, which is a blessing and a curse at the same time. It means I can take anything. So Tell about your last fight. My last fight, I fought Casey Benjamin, who's he's, he's a very good fighter. Yeah, yeah. So I fought him. I wasn't there to win. I was an un bookies underdog. They they just brought me in just just for him to be, to be honest. I went in there, beat him, expecting the phone calls for a big fight to come in. It was an exciting fight. I touched the floor in the tenth round and made it even more exciting. So I'm good for TV, mate. So I'm just waiting for that um, phone call, and I'm confident w w when it ca happens, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready for it. So. I saw you saying about, you know, you've got the uh, support from um, Portsmouth, you know, sort of getting behind you now because I was looking for, remember when I spoke to you on um, years ago over a Zoom call and I was saying, are you looking to be like the next Tony Oki because we're looking for the next Oki Koki from Portsmouth because I remember you because um, I boxed Josh Lee from your old club Moneyfields back in the day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 and Mark Coombs. Yeah, I know them guys there. So yeah, what, what so... Yeah, are you are you still pushing on for that? When are we going to see that surge? Let us know. Well, the dream of Fratton Park. I'd I'd love that. But um, Portsmouth really get behind me. Uh, obviously, they're an unbelievable city for supporters and and supporting their own. Um, there's kind of at the moment. A, a good array of talent coming through from Portsmouth obviously me you've got Mark Chamberlain who's who's been fighting on the Riyadh season shows and uh, looking great uh, you've got Lucas who just won the IBF European and up at Welterweight gonna gonna be so successful at Welterweight as well so as a team as a collective as long as we're shining real good light and flying the flag in a positive way for our city then who knows what the future holds um, but yeah, I, I love my city. I'm, I'm proud to be flying a flag for my city and, and, and proud to be from, from the area. So, so yeah. Talking about flying a flag from the city and, you know, support getting behind you. Another thing, because I've got a lot of, um, I'm, being Jama I'm Jamaican descent, so I've got a lot of Caribbean following. So let the people know who don't know um, about your Caribbean background and heritage. Yeah, so my, my uh, our dad's half Jamaican, so our, our grandmother's Jamaican. Um, Mandeville, Jamaica. Yeah, of course. Um, Chance Hill, actually. But I've, we, we've been, I've been there twice as a kid. He's been there as well. Um, but yeah, uh, proud to be representing. Like, so the McKinson name is my Jamaican name. So proud to be representing McKinson's in Jamaica, in America as well. So, uh, so yeah, very proud. Big up all the all the yard massive them. <laughs> Come on, I'm the master of Shinado. So, <laughs> so yeah, just uh, last words. Let the people um, know why they need to tune in to your fight, and also why someone needs to get him on their show, and you know, everyone start getting behind the McKinson brothers. Earlier on, when I like mentioned the Congo, it's any of the way away. It's like, and I'm not bad mouth in Congo. He's a big part of my story, and I'll, I guess I'm a big part of his as well there's a lot of respect there but Lucas needs his opportunity when I was in Lucas's stage and nobody wanted to fight me Congo gave me my opportunity do you know what I mean so give my little brother is or one of them one of them but um, yeah tune in October 19th I've, I've been a pro over 10 years come October 19th um, my journey's been a great one uh, my 28th pro fight this would be my sixth or seventh title how many times this my sixth title i think <laughs> lost count um and yeah it's just just another chapter of my journey and uh i promise my city of portsmouth i promise all my sponsors that i'll give everything and and be victorious on the night and i'm going to give the last words to your brother let everyone know or let the fighters know why they need to come and see you and have you got um, an alias name as well ring name no. Listen, tell, no. him, tell him what you was called when well, you listen I was, I was called pretty boy when I was younger I've been pro nine years mate so I've been about a while as well took too many pu punches to the face I'm not pretty boy anymore but to tell you what I'm, I'm an exciting fighter and I deserve my opportunity now um, 
I think my name's about now a bit a, a credible opponent who's only been beat by top, top people himself so I feel like my opportunities now and it, it's my time and whenever that phone rings I'm ready and I'm taking it with both hands and there you have it guys we've been joined by Lucas McKinson and Mikey the problem McKinson and there you have it it's Fight Fan TV Live it's Danny Glover and remember guys persistence beats resistance you know where it is <laughs>